We're here for the duration. <laughs> so, Guy, tell us about uh, where you grew up and how old are you now? You said 90? Yeah. And you were born where? St. John, Prairie, Vermont. Yeah, and where'd you grow up? In St. John, Prairie, Vermont. Yeah, and... Went to school out there, high school and everything. So when did you move to Johnson? Or that area, Eden area? I went in the service in the Navy in 1946. Was in there until 1949. My dad had already bought a farm in Eden. So when I got discharged from the Navy, I went back to Eden. Lived with them for three, four years. Yeah. Something like that. Well, we were married in 1953. We were married in Johnson. Yeah. At the United Church. Yeah. 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 Seems yeah. like that's where everybody got married back yeah. then. We moved to Jericho. Jericho. You gave up your job in the mill. Which mill did you work in? Worked for Dudley Lumber Company in North Hyde Park. Yeah. What was that like? Oh no, I enjoyed that. That was a good job. And that was the sawmill up there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. Fine. <clears throat> Oldest place there was in the wintertime, but oh yeah. Good. Was there, wasn't there two or three mills up there at that yeah. time? Uh, Buck Heath had a mill there, and his brother, another one, and uh, it was it right down on Route, uh, route, what, route 100? Was it Bullard's? Bullard's, yes. Novelty Mill. It was there. Oh no, that was. Pretty good living. I was pretty happy there. What well, what did you do with the mill? Did I tailed the boards off and stacked lumber. Drove truck. Whatever <laughs> had to be done. Did you ever work with George Bradley at all? Her father? Yeah. No. No. Well, when I was with her family and. <clears throat> We had to do something to go somewhere. We had a car. George and Marina didn't have a car. We always went to their house in the weekends. And we went to, well, off of, maybe to Waterbury or to <laughs> wherever they sold liquor, Jeffersonville. George had to get a pint. Hardwick. Or Hardwick, yep. Yeah. Also, we went wherever we went, we went, we went camping and grocery fishing. shopping. Yeah. Yeah. We went uh, one summer, drove our car. Her and I, she was pregnant with our oldest. With Phil. Huh? Paul. Paul went with us. Paul went with us to Long Island. New York to see Amos, her uncle, George's brother, Amos. Amos and Min, Amos and Minnie. Yeah. We had a pretty good trip. What was Amos and Minnie like? What did they do, and what were they like? They were real uh, well, they're old. They're all people. retired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All I can remember at their house was she cooked a leg of lamb. I don't think I'd ever eaten lamb. And uh, we ate it cold, I think. Well, anyways, it was Amos that took us over to Long Island and we met uh, Pearsall. Pearsall. No, Amos was George's brother? Brother. Yeah. yeah. And he took us to Long Island to meet with another And Amos' sister. wife was George's sister. No. No, oh, no, Pearsall's wife. Pearsall's wife. Yeah. 
Well, how did Amos end up in New York? He, could, he, did they come out of uh, Cannon Corners, with the, where the rest of them came from? Where Grandpa was born. They all were family there in Moors. Or, yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. I suppose, that's right. Yeah. I think her name was Frida, wasn't it? Her Frida? name? Less. Less than... Frida? Huh. A dad sister, or half-sister. There was only... There was Aunt Pearl, Sample, Uncle Amos, and Aunt Cora, and Dad, or whole brother and sisters. But then there was what's the name of that one that sent us the, her will, her last will and testimony that she was going to take care of Aunt Pearl. Vern. Vern. They came one summer out from Johnson. Great big friggin' boat that get bigger than the house. And they stayed up. It's the only time I ever saw those people. Jack and Vern. He, he, she was a half sister to Dad. And that Frida, or Les Pearsall's wife, was a half sister. So, did they have the same dad or the same mom? The same dad, I think. And then there was a younger brother named Edwin. Yes, I've heard that name before. And that's Paul's middle name, Paul Edwin. Uncle so, Paul. Yeah. But that pretty well takes care of dad's family. I went. When I got out of high school, I went to Washington, D.C. and stayed with Aunt Cora and Uncle Henry for about three weeks. And then I didn't like Washington. <laughs> Too crowded, huh? Too much, Too much of a country girl. <laughs> <laughs> they were funny people. I'm different. <laughs> and she was, oh, she was an old lady. And every time, Dolores Morin went with me. And every time we'd go into Washington from Maryland for an interview, she'd go with us. She'd interview with the people too. Protecting of, your young girls. <laughs> and so where did you and Lois first meet? When's the first time you got you two got together? You yeah. remember? Through Kirk. I used to run around with Kirk. Of course, he lived at he lived at home. Oh, yeah. Same as you did. And uh, I had a motorcycle. Kurt had a car. Sometimes we'd go on the motorcycle. Sometimes we'd go in the car. But mostly in the car. Uh, we used, we used to go to those dances up at Dussel's. Yeah. Barn dance. And, yeah. and across the gym. Yeah. When they had something was going on there. So that's how we met. Yeah, it was through Kirk. Yeah. So did you date very long before you guys got married? Maybe a year. Not until after I got out. Well, a couple years maybe, because I got out of high school in 51. Yeah. Yeah. And you got married in 52? 53. 53. So, so I was three years old. No. But you used to come pick me up on Friday nights down at the health department in Burlington, take us back to Johnson. Or over to Marjorie's. Yeah. That's why you were living at Marjorie's when you worked down there. I was trying to think where you worked, and it was the health department. Yeah, yeah. 38 and a half years. Oh, wow. That's a long time. Yeah. But I'm not sorry. I worked long enough, so I got a pension and everything. We finally got an apartment in Jericho and drove to work in Burlington every day. Cut her off. So where did you first live when you got married in Johnson? Was it we didn't live in Johnson. So you didn't live in Johnson at all? You, you no, ended was, up going to Jericho? I was living with Marjorie because yeah. I was working in Burlington. Yeah. And, uh, 
Mr. Bell's here job. every Wednesday and the weekends. We go get you and we go back to your mother's house. Yeah. Yeah. Who was left at the Bradley house back then? Was uh, Paul was still at oh, home? Oh, Jimmy. Barbara, Barbara, of course. Yeah, Barbara yeah. was there. Paul, and Jimmy, and Barb. Yeah, that's all. George and Rena. Margie got married soon. She got out of high school in 1948. Moved right to Jericho. She didn't stay in Johnson at all. She told us about meeting Bud at, at a basketball game. That yeah, and up in Jericho. Yeah. Was it at a basketball game or was it at the in house or what they call that? Over in Underhill? Yeah. We used to go. Chicken coop. Chicken coop. That's all. Underhill Center. We used to go there and dance. Yeah. Was that mostly barn dancing type stuff? No, yeah. not well, mostly. There was some, some, but it wasn't mostly. Like country western country type. Country western, thing. yeah. Round dancing and square dancing. Yeah. Oh, we went. Quite a few places. Every weekend we went yep. somewhere dancing. I recall there was one called the, like, I think it was Cobweb that pe people used to go to years ago. I think that was yeah, in... Yeah, that was where? Down Milton or somewhere? Yeah. Cobweb. I remember cobweb. the name. Yeah, the I, Cobweb was in Milton. Yeah, I, I don't know if we ever went. Yeah, I think we did. Once or twice. Yeah. yeah, and there was one in Stowe I think everybody went to for a while. Is that the barn dance? Yeah. Nichols? Nichols is. Yeah. Never go, never, we never went there. And Dussel's is probably the favorite spot. And we went there probably every week. Yeah, now. every week. So. Yeah. In our era it was Silver Ridge. Yeah, Silver Ridge. Phil, used Philip to used to come too. to Silver well, Ridge. We were married when we went there. Yeah. We'd pick up Petey and Clifford. Yeah. Go down to Silver Ridge. Yeah. Well, we spent a lot of time with Petey and Clifford. After we were oh, yes, we did. Yeah. When did Beattie and Clifford get married? They That's a good married. question. Yes, they were. <laughs> we we were stood up with them before oh, us. Oh, they went were. to New Hampshire or somewhere and got married. Clifford was married over in Germany. Oh, during the war. During the, the war. Or second world war. And yeah. he had an awful time trying to get a divorce from her. Well, Germany, I thought it was England. I thought it was Germany. Well, maybe girl. it was England. What well, was Clifford there during the war? Only the ones that lived over there came for, later. For nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lois, were you born right at the Bradley House? As far as I know, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, when you uh, went to the grade school up there, was the the block building there then, or that that hadn't been built yet, has it? When you went to grade school in Johnson, we went to the high school. Where'd you go through grade school? Right but, at the high school. But yeah. there was just the there was just the twin buildings there at that time, wasn't there? What year was that? You started school. Remember who your teachers were? I went to the lower grades were downstairs and the upper grades were upstairs at the high school. But there was just that one building. Right. It didn't have the it front have building. The, no. I mean, now it's Taj Mahal, but it didn't have the brick part where no. you walk downstairs to the cafeteria. No. That wasn't there yet. It's just the high school. Just the high school. So who was teaching back in those years? I had, uh, I think her name was Lois Mann, Dr. Mann's daughter first grade. Somewhere Melba Blanchard was in there. She taught first and second grade. Dookie started the year before me and he kept they kept him back in the first grade so we went all 12 grades together. We had Cassie Potter in the third and fourth grade and Lily Sargent in the fifth and sixth grade. Then we went upstairs and we had That one everybody had was yeah, so mean and yeah, ugly. Yeah, was it a sergeant? The one that said, I had two when I left this morning. <laughs> <laughs>
Flossie de Mary. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've heard that name. Yeah. Call her Flossie. <laughs> Everybody had her. Yeah, Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> Kurt always ended up in the principal's office. He, <laughs> what was that? That was in first grade. He went to Melba Blanchard in the first grade. And he did something wrong, and she, the desk, and the teacher's desk had the hole in it, you know, and the, the front was closed up. So she. <laughs> She put Kurt under her desk one day because he was acting up. I guess he tore his stockings off. Mickey, for some reason, St. Johnsbury, he, his like whole thing is to get back to St. Yes. Johnsbury. Oh, yeah. 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 And he has very fond memories of living in St. Johnsbury yeah. as a kid. He still owns property there, got a house there. Yeah, it's been empty for years, but it's yeah. still there. They have to go mow the lawn and everything. Yeah. But, um, so where did you guys go to school in St. John's Fair? Well, we left the St. John Bar Center and went to their uh, elementary school, graduated from eighth grade, and, uh, and they went to St. John Bar Trade School, vocational school. Oh, you had a trade school? Yeah, went there. I quit junior year, joined the Navy. But that's where you learned to be a machinist. Yeah. Yeah, that was a trade I took out, machinist trade. So are, are a lot of your fond memories St. John's Ferry? Like oh, that's really where your childhood oh, yeah. was, oh, yeah. St. John's Ferry, yeah. not Eden. We all grew up there, yeah. yeah. My dad worked in the Fairbanks Moss Scale Factory. Phil. Good number of years. Uh, but he always wanted a farm, always. We used to go on hikes, go look over a farm. Us three boys trailing along behind him. Go somewhere, he heard about a farm for sale or not working. he go look it over. One day, Joe Cattell, up to where, where do you live? East Johnson. East Johnson. He had a farm there. For years. I don't know if you know Joe. I I I know the name. You know, right, He's yeah. brother well, to Phil. Your brother to my father. So he came up one day. Said Phil, I've located. I came up to St. John Bar Center. Said Phil, I've located a farm for you. A good farm in Eden. If you want, I'll take you over there and we'll look it all over. Help you set it up. Buy a bunch of cattle. You'll go to farm. It's just what he wanted. So I was in the service then. I was in I I joined in 1946, so that was I think it was 1947 that he moved from St. John Bray Center to Eden on that farm the same year, well, not the same year, the year after I'd been gone away. And, uh, and I got out of service in 1949, and a three year stint in service. Uh, I went back to the farm, I lived with them, worked in a sawmill. I don't three, four years. But so that's how we all started in, from St. John Bray Booth to Eden. So in order, what are you kids in order as far as age goes? Uh, Anne is the youngest. Margaret is the oldest. Yeah. Margaret, John, me, Mickey, June, Emma. Emma. And Anne. And Anne. That's it. So when they moved to the farm, were there still kids at home? Yeah, Anne and Emma. Emma and Anne. Mickey was still in the service. And I, when I got out, he had, I don't know, two or three more years to do. 
He was in the Navy also. You worked on the farm as well, though, after you got out of the service, besides yeah. the sawmill? You helped out around? Well, didn't you start with an agriculture thing? I thought you did. No, they wanted me to. So I'd stay on the farm with the old man. Mickey says, you don't want to do that guy. You don't want to stay here with him. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> now, the yep. barn was on the other side of the road, though, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah, I thought I remember yep. that. Um, now I lost my train of thought. Margaret didn't live at home though, did she? I'd never seen her over there two or three times in my lifetime. That was in St. Johnbury Center. And we kids were, I don't know, 10, 12 years old, something like that. She went to live with grandparents? No, not her, not grandparents. Uh, was a woman and her husband named Fadden in St. Johnsbury. He was a railroad engineer. She was a home kid for this woman. They had two daughters. The oldest one died, and the younger one was, I suppose, she was probably still alive. Pauline was her name, I forget the older girl's name. And they were friends with my mother. Well, they had three, four, five kids, whatever amount they were, my mother and father. And Mrs. Fadden would like Margaret to come and live with them. They'd put her through school, buy whatever she needed, take care of her, be their child. Nurses training. Huh? She was a registered nurse. Yeah, well, that's what she finally finished her training that as a, yeah, after she graduated from high school. How old was she when she went there to live? Was she well, little? She was, she was older than the rest of us, but she probably was, I don't know, maybe 16, maybe. I really, it's really vague, I can't Yeah, tell. because you didn't grow up with her, so you don't no, remember no. her. No, no, didn't even know her. So she had kind of a plush life compared to the rest of you because oh, yeah. she went on, oh, she, it was really like in a... Pretty, pretty well set up. Was yeah. She, was, she was, that was a great opportunity for yeah. her. But, yeah. And they were glad to have her, those folks, and they did what they ever had to do. To Probably the loss of their other daughter and yeah, she kind of became place, a sister took the place of her, yeah. to their other daughter. Yeah. yeah. That wasn't uncommon back then, working out and and going off to live with somebody else. I met her just once. I think that was the time they settled your father's estate. I don't recall. And she got her money. She married somebody named Pickett. 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 Pickett, yeah. over in New Hampshire. Yeah. yeah. And she had a bunch of kids. June and Emma. Went over to find her one day, didn't they? Probably Anne and her. Anne and Emma. This was... they, I guess they all located her. Yeah. Spoke to her. They... Now one of the siblings built a new house on the farm, didn't they? Next door to it? Yeah, Emma. Emma. Emma built that house? No. George Damaris built it <laughs> for Emma. For Emma. My father foot the bill. Yeah. Now, did Emma and George, were they sweethearts in high school? No. No. No? She he was married to Thompson. Thompson. He was a barber, wasn't he? Yeah. 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 Uh, they got divorced. And she, she never married again. No, I worked with her at the college. Yeah. Yeah, she worked there for a long time. She's a beautiful woman. She, yeah. everybody yeah. loved Emma. Yeah. 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 Nice woman. Yeah. And her and George finally <laughs> hooked up together, stayed together for yeah. years. Bought stuff together, owned that, 
Well, George is married to Katie what? Catherine. Catherine, the town clerk. Yeah. And she owned a uh, trailer park up there. Yep, Katie where, Lynn, where Keith Katie, lives. Where, yeah, where George lived. That was his mother's house. That George lived in that house, the main house. Courier. Courier. She yep. was a courier. Yep. Yep. Uh, so Norm Courier was actually half brother to George. Is that? Do you remember Norman? Norman Lynn Courier. I think so. They lived over huh. on Railroad Street, up that toward the cemetery. Yeah, yeah they, they, lived they did in a have a house of, there. Yeah. I, I recall that now. They built a new one. And then there. they lived in the trailer park in a house. They did. They had a ranch. Ha that had, gray one that's just. Yes. By your mailboxes. Yes. Norman, I'm thinking of Kelso. That he worked at the college, Kelso Carrier. Was that so? Was he Norm's father? I really don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. So maybe his mother, it was Kelso. Maybe Carrier. the mother was the common thread. Maybe Norman was the son of the woman that George's mother or stepmother. I don't know why he was uh, Petey used to babysit for Kelso's kids. There was two of them. A girl and a boy. Maybe Norman was for the boy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. they head down. To, yeah. I wish I could find some of them old fishing pictures yeah. that down in Swanton. That they used yeah. to take cameras with them, but I can't Come find them. First of May, the walleyes and the said, pike. I'm going and, walleye fishing. Yeah. And then nothing stopped Wayne from going fishing. That Did was you it. Get that on, have you? Yep. You better ask that question. Oh, <laughs> I want I want to ask you about your mom because. My memories of your mom is when she'd go to Mickey's and Barb's, yeah. and, or Barb would take her to a doctor's appointment and stuff, and she was always so quiet and and shy, and like, what was she like growing up? Like, well, she had command of us children in the house, provided for them, clothes and food and everything. Well, my, my father, of course, was a man. Was he, he was the provider. He was yes, like the yes. worker. My yes. father had command of his wife. Had, right. Oh yes, I, oh yeah. I I knew that. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so what was your mother's maiden name? Cody. Cody. And was she from St. Johnsbury area? Oh, she was from uh, East Hardwick. And I don't know how my father from Richford ever got hooked up with my mother from East Hardwick. I just don't know. <laughs> and what were your grandparents' name, your mother's parents? Do you remember them? Yes, well, we used to go there. Nikki and me and seems that three of us boys, John, John went to East Hardwick to stay with them folks for summer, maybe a week, maybe two weeks. Stay with. Grandma Cody, or Grandpa Grandma Cody, my mother's father and mother. Or my mother was adopted by them people. Yes. My mother was Canadian. She was not a naturalized citizen. Never was. She always complained to my father about being one. She wanted to be a An American. naturalized citizen. She never was. She just couldn't get it. <laughs> so she must have been like a dual, like a Canadian and American. No, like, no. So she, she was never, never even naturalized. a dual. No, no. no, no. She was just Canadian. Yeah. yeah. She was an immigrant at the. Yeah. Even in the end, know, um, she was still Canadian. She was born in Canada. Yeah. But we don't know who she was born to. <laughs> well, we have our some kind of ideas or thoughts. I wouldn't say that. But she was adopted by the Codys. Yep. Yep. And that sounds like a French Canadian name too, so maybe they had a in Oh, Arthur must... Cody was a blacksmith in East Hardwick. So were they good to her? Like were they good people? Like Oh yeah, very nice. Oh, us boys they just had a grand time over there. Yeah. We were last year though, never a little shit, really. 
then I'm big enough to move around and go around. Yeah. But well, I always wanted to go down where the grapple was in the blacksmith shop. No, you can't go in there. Somebody might bring a horse there. You have to shoot a horse because he was a farrier also. Uh, but that was always a great time for us three boys to go over there with Grandpa Cody and Grandpa Cody. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice people. I can al always remember your mom. She seems so frail and little. And yeah. yeah. J but just sweet. Just a sweet yeah. woman. He's awful easy to get along with. I know Barb, Barb fought the world of her. But, uh, Chanel okay. number five, that's what Sharon told me, that <laughs> Grant, Grant McAtell always, at Christmas time, would buy, or I don't know if she bought it for Sharon, but her perfume was Chanel number five. That's what her perfume oh, I was. Don't know. I, don't, I doubt if she ever bought her anything. She went, if she could get $10 out of them, she'd spend it somewhere. But for herself or for her children. Yeah. But Dad was the provider and he paid all the bills. He always took her grocery shop and told went. her what to buy. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that doesn't fly anymore. <laughs> no. No. Oh, Mickey's got a lot of your father in him. <laughs> oh, no. This Mom one has every once place in a while. Was. <laughs> when the old man came home, he was in charge. Well, that's the way it was then. Oh, yeah. Really, yes, a lot, most yeah. relationships, that's the way it was then. Well, is the I man was in charge. Was, and and that was her fault. Yeah. George Bradley wasn't in charge. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that happens also. There's nothing wrong with it. They're all good people. She probably figured with all those kids, she had to be in charge. You know, she well, was yeah. Right. George was off working. He won't want to lay around. George Bradley was... <laughs> Sounds all to me, folks, well, they had a job. Sounds to me from the stories I've heard that George George was really the softy. The ones that the kids just freaking adored and Rena was the disciplinarian. Yeah, that yeah. She yeah. she kept the kids in tow. Yeah. She yeah. wasn't afraid to put a hand to them. No. But I'll tell you, as her grandchild, she was the most wonderful woman to me that ever existed like when she'd come up like on the weekend and the popcorn came out and the puzzles and the scrabble game it's like those were some of the best childhood memories of my life was grandma bradley coming and she always stuck up for me you know she she was always my advocate i just i just adored her yeah. i always thought well, my I was mother, she, she i think i think that she run the house. I think she was happy with you. Got all the meals. I think that those your children meant a lot to her. And in fact, I wish I could have been your children and had Grandma Bradley we all the a, time. But had a big garden we had to grow every year, and then we had to get out there and work on it. We were going to get your ass kicked when the old man got home, and if you uh, did something wrong during the day, upset my mother. You straighten out or I'm going to tell your father when he gets home. <laughs> hey. Then they did get that it. That meant business. Yeah, because you knew he, right he, there. you weren't going to get off on that. Oh, no, no. You better pay attention. So, oh, no. She had control of us kids when they were all in there. I can't help but thinking the other day when Ann was here, we were talking about it. Says, well, I remember most about my mother. She was a great cook, and I loved her pies. That's what Ann said. Yeah. We're sitting right here. And I began to think about that. You know, a week or so later, what Ann said. I tried to remember, you know, what, what she <laughs> the meals or whatever we had. I can't even get anything tied in. But of course, Ann and Emma there long after we'd all left and me and Mick had gone away. But we all got fed. I told Ann I didn't like your mother's rice pudding. She said, you didn't? She says, I love that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
uh, not like my mother. But <laughs> every year when we lived in St. Johnbury Center, my father was always, as I've said before, about looking at a fire. He had an old buddy that would come down and take him around by a bottle, you know, and that they go out. And uh, he had a farm, but he didn't farm anymore. But he may be raising a beef or something like that, or a hog. And my father would share some of that with him. And uh, he also would have a plot of land, put a piece of land down there, back of the barn. And this guy had a team of horses and all the equipment for the farm. My dad was a farmer, so he hook everything up, plow up a piece of the land. That was our garden. We'd raise beans, soldier beans, and potatoes. And when we got done, when he got done from Fairbanks on the weekend or something, I'll go back up there. Pull up the potatoes, bug them, pull up the beans. And when us boys got old enough, go up there by ourselves. Go up there and take care of that gun. Well, no more. Oh, yes, I know about it. <laughs> 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 yeah. Did you use a flail and flail those beans to get the beans out? You have to bring him out in a, uh, well, first of all, set up a barrel, whiskey barrel. Beans had to be dry, you know, pull the beans up, stack them up, let the wind go through them for two or three weeks, dry them right out. Take them off that stack. Barrel set up there in the field on an angle like that. Grab a bunch of them beans by the roots, you know, with the stalks. Stick them in that barrel, shake them, hack them, smack them against the <laughs> barrel edges till all the beans came out, beans themselves. That was a day's work. And all three of us. Do that. He was there. He'd show us how to do it, what to do. We'd get to raising hell once in a while, like digging potatoes, and throw a potato at John. <laughs> but that's the way he did the beans. How many cows then, was he milking up there? No, there weren't no cows. No, and when he was up at the farm, how, how many cows did he Oh, up at the Eden? Yeah. Probably had 40 cows. That, that's quite a lot of cows for that time period. 40 head. He may be milking 25 or 30. Of them, about to be Where did his milk go? Where did they ship the milk to? I remember. I don't know if or. I don't know. Somebody come and pick it up. We had a water tub. In the milk house, we called it. Filled in cans. 40, cans. 40 quart can. Check them down in that water. Was all I could do was pick one out of there. I couldn't. And, uh, That's what Margie's husband did. Yeah. Picked up milk from the farms. Yeah. But milk cans. Yeah, you have to have be pretty rugged to be able to do that. But when they come around and made all the farmers put in a boat tank. Uh, my dad wouldn't do it. He said, I'm going to spend that money on that. And that's when he quit farming. That was in Eden. But it was, it was a great time over there in St. Johnbury when they, they took care of everything. We had, there were three boys are going to be doing something. There. <laughs> you probably ate by the seasons just like we did. The perch in the winter, the venison in the fall, well venison most time, any time of year. And 
the garden in the summer. Yep, yep. And there was a garden right in back of the house that my mother helped look after. She can? Yes, yes. Probably not much freezing then because freezers were no, probably no, no, no a wishful had a, thing. Had a refrigerator, but no freezer. One of those with a thing on the top. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the motor up on the uh, top. I don't know, you think back, no, we did quite well. Uh, you think today, if her and I had six kids, was that enough? Seven kids? That we let off brothers and sisters? Well, we'd have quite a job looking after them, even with both of us working. Yeah. Well, in that back then, your work was staying home in the garden because that's where your food and everything came from. Yeah. We we decided that we ate healthier as kids than we do now as adults because we we really <coughs> we really went to the store. Everything came yeah. from what we raised at the house. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. yeah we remember pretty well. Ma used to have four or five hundred jars of stuff down somewhere. I remember the year that the blackberries all worked. They got spoiled, or bubbled, fermented. fermented. <coughs> Had some venison. She made some mincemeat. And she used those, work, those fermented blackberries in put it in that mincemeat and I think that's the best mincemeat she ever made. Yeah, because when you cook it, the alcohol dissipates. Yeah. So, oh, she added a lot of other stuff to it, but she used those fermented blackberries. Never found any mincemeat taste like that. Again. No, that canned stuff definitely isn't the same mincemeat. Now his brother John died just a while back. Just, what, this year, wasn't it? Last year, wasn't it? The end of last year. Did John live in Michigan? Did, no. Where did John live? In Bennington. Oh. Shaftsbury. Okay. Yeah. When the twins were born, he lived in Middlebury. For Jens. Who? John. Harriet. We went down there one time to visit him. He was working for somebody, some big farm. Yeah. yeah. Middlebury, was it? Addison County. I think it was Middlebury. No, yeah. yeah, he was he was a farmer. John was a farmer. That's all he ever did. No, it ain't all he ever did. He did the all the time of his life. When he moved to Shaftesbury, Bennington, he worked for a tool company down there. Not Snap-on, was it? No. Stanley? Stanley. Ah, uh, yep. They had a big manufacturing plant there. John worked there for a good many years. He retired out of there, I think. Was he like a machinist or something there? Well, I ain't sure just what he did, but he might have been. Yeah. Uh, well, as I know, John had pretty good life. That is. He had uh, three girls, a set of twins, and Debbie. Debbie. Right? And Johnny. And the boy. Oh, Johnny. Johnny's still alive. Yeah. yeah. Tw well, twins well, are too. Twins are too, yeah. yeah. But I never, I don't remember one, I don't know if I ever met them as a kid. No. They had to send them to. I guess they called it random training school at the time. The they, girls. Girls. They yeah. couldn't handle them. They were always in trouble. Yeah. But. That would have been, I think, uh, uh,